This session is on paper, board and timber as a material area. Now, this can be a slightly confusing um, material area because all the papers, boards and timbers come from the same source, which is trees. But hopefully in this video, we're going to kind of hopefully cut, cut through the wood through the trees as it was and define what the differences are between these materials. And we're going to talk about the, the properties and applications of the, some of them, uh, the differences between hardwoods and softwoods. And we're going to talk about some general terms that you might encounter if you're um, studying um, around the material area of paper, board and timber. So first of all, um, breaking down uh, paper, I mean paper as, as a material is something that we generally um, draw on, we write on it, and it's quite a compliant material which means we can fold it quite easily, we can cut it with knives and scissors and things like this, it's quite easy to mach machine and shape. Okay. Um, the different types of paper you might need to know about, I would say for your uh, GCSE exam, are cartridge paper, layout paper, tracing paper, grid paper, and bleed proof, or is it sometimes called marker paper or marker pad. Now, cartridge paper, you can see in the picture there, has quite a rough, coarse texture on it, or sometimes known as a tooth, and that tooth makes it easier for it to basically scrape away some of the materials you'll be rubbing against it, the different medium you'll be using, things like chalk pastels, oil pastels, and uh, even pencils, like soft, soft uh, B pencils and things like this, will be abraded on that sort of rough surface. Now layout paper is often used by um, designers and it's often used as a quick sketching medium. It's a, it's a very thin paper, it's quite cheap um, and obviously it needs to be cheap and stuff because we, we could as designers be creating many many ideas. So layout paper uh, is very very thin and cheap but also it's slightly translucent. Now the advantage of this um, if you're using a layout pad filled with layout paper is quite often you can work from the back of the book and if you do a design idea you can lay another sheet of layout paper over the top of that idea because it's semi-transparent or a bit translucent you can see the idea from the page above and then you can kind of trace through and make little changes. Now it's also cheaper than tracing paper so that might be another reason why you'd use it over tracing paper. Tracing paper obviously is also quite translucent, but it's slightly thicker and it's a slightly higher quality than the, the layout paper. So if you're doing, you know, you want a good quality uh, product at the end of your, your tracing, you might choose tracing paper over a layout paper. Now, grid paper should be quite familiar to you if you've done maths, because it's often used in maths to create uh, graphs and uh, grids and things, or use the grids to help you draw geometric shapes. It's quite characterised by having that familiar grid or graph pattern on it, which is normally a sort of a light squared uh, pattern on the surface. The, the squares are normally broken down into sort of 5 millimetre or 10 millimetre increments to make it easier for you to mathematically calculate things. And there's other forms of grid paper as well, such as isometric grid paper, which will help you to do isometric drawings, where the lines, as opposed to being set at 90 degrees, are set at sort of 30 degrees going in either direction, so you can draw uh, an isometric drawing. The final type of paper I'm going to talk about is bleed proof or marker paper, but it's useful to know, I suppose, what bleeding is as a term before we go into this. Now, bleeding uh, refers to when we're using some sort of liquid ink, whether it be uh, a watercolour marker or a, an alcohol-based or marker pen, as designers would often use to render products. Now, what happens if you put uh, a marker pen onto a normal sheet of paper is through the process of osmosis, as in uh, liquid traveling from a high concentration into a low concentration, the liquid ink from the pen gets drawn into the paper and bleeds. Now, bleed proof paper or bleed proof pad or marker pad, okay, has the ability that it won't bleed. So that ink will not spread across the paper, okay. You've probably noticed it at times when you've been coloring in on normal copier paper or cartridge paper or something, that that pen starts to move across, the ink starts to move across the page and bleed across the page. So marker paper prevents that or at least stops it being quite such a, a, an issue. The next material group I'm going to talk about is board. Now, board can be broken down, and this is where it gets a bit confusing. It can sometimes be called board, sometimes it's called cardboard, sometimes just card, okay? These three things are kind of the same sort of thing. They, they basically mean a, a heavyweight paper, okay? Now, paper is measured by 
GSM. Now, this stands for grams per square meter, okay? So for every square meter of a product, it will weigh a certain amount of grams, and that's how we can categorize different papers and boards. Now, for something to be considered a board, it needs to be 200 grams per square meter or above. Otherwise, we could consider it as being some sort of paper or other paper stock. Okay, the different types of board that you might encounter in the exam would be uh, like a solid whiteboard, inkjet card, corrugated card, duplex board, foam core board, and foil lined board or some sort of laminated board. Okay, now a solid whiteboard is exactly what it says. It's a very high quality, very pure whiteboard. Okay, that's used for sort of like high end uh, packaging or um, some sort of uh, printing primary packaging surface okay inkjet card is is quite like what it says um, and it goes into an inkjet printer now this is a little bit like marker pad was talking about before and it prevents that ink from the inkjet printer from bleeding and spreading across the paper and creating like a smudgy poor quality outcome so an inkjet card would be uh, treated in some way to stop that from bleeding corrugated card as you can see by the picture is made up of different layers now the picture there has got sort of uh, four different layers of corrugations, the corrugations being the sort of wiggly bits of cardboard that are inserted in between the flat layers of cardboard around the outside. Now, corrugated card has got multiple properties. It's often used as a sort of secondary packaging. If you've ever ordered something from, say, Amazon, it normally comes in a corrugated card box and your product will be inside and quite often it will be packaged inside. Could, could say it's fairly wasteful of resources, I suppose, in that sense. But the corrugated card offers a few different properties. One of the key properties of it is it's a shock absorber. So if it does take the odd uh, knock or perhaps gets dropped around uh, when it's being moved from place to place or delivered to your door, it will take that shock and hopefully not transfer it to the product, damaging the product inside. The other advantage of corrugated card with those corrugations is they trap air. So the, the, the material is also quite a good insulator. And that's why if you've ever ordered a pizza from, say, Pizza, um, pizza Hut or a Domino's Pizza, it might come in a corrugated card container to basically prevent that heat from leaching out and giving you a hot product when it arrives at your door. Some of the limitations, I suppose, of corrugated card is the fact that it's got that brown colour. So it's not really suitable like whiteboard or inkjet card for a good quality print because it's got that brown surface. So normally if you buy a um, product and it comes in a corrugated card box, it's normally printed with some fairly standard colours, maybe black or red or just a plain green. Okay. Now duplex board is quite obvious if you know what the word duplex means and it relates to things having two sides. Duplex board like that has two sides and two different finishes. On one side of the duplex board we can have sort of a, a shiny um, printable uh, surface and on the inside we can have a cheaper uh, unfinished surface. Now, if you imagine something like a, a cereal box on the outside you might want some high quality printed graphics to help sell your product but on the inside it doesn't matter so much so we can use an unfinished surface such as a grey or just a, a buff colour it won't matter too much to the product because the, the main uh, key point of the, the, the box is the fact the outside graphics look good the inside it doesn't matter too much. Now, foam core board is something you may have used in uh, your department for modelling purposes. It's commonly used for architectural model models, mainly because of its structure and the good quality uh, surface finish that it starts off with. So if you look at you know architectural models and buildings and things, they're often made with foam core board and you've got that characteristic white, slightly shiny or satin surface around the outside. On the inside of the foam core board is, as you'd likely expect, foam. Okay, so there's a an aerated sort of polymer inside, which gives it a slightly squidgy characteristic. The advantage of that as well is it gives it a thickness and a structure. So if we're making model buildings, we can make walls and things quite easily. The other advantages to the foam core board, other than the, the self-finished surface on the outside, is it also takes paint and media quite well, and you can obviously colour and add graphics and patterns things to the outside of your buildings such as windows and doors to make it look more realistic. The last on our list is foil lined board and again just like it says it is board that is lined with foil okay so we've got a very thin probably layer of perhaps aluminium or something like this um, on the inside of the board laminated to the board and you've probably often got other laminations of polymers on the outside as well. Now the different linings or the different layers of the board 
create different uh, properties. So on the outside, if we've got a, a layer of polymer, this will protect the printed surface underneath. The white surface or the printable surface will take the print and allow us to add graphics and instructions and things to perhaps a piece of packaging. On the inside, we will have a foil lining and this will, you know, perhaps reflect heat or cool back in, but also make the product aseptic, as in keep bacteria out and keep the freshness of the product in. And there may even be another polymer lining on the inside so that water doesn't leak through or, or, or go through the surface to the outside. So all of these different layers act for different properties and it means full iron board is ideal for creating a food packaging or drinks packaging as you might have seen you might have noticed the term tetra pack if you've bought a carton of orange juice or something like this and this is an example of full line board as an application now the third category we're going to talk about very briefly is woods now woods can be broken down into a few different categories i should use the term timber i suppose so timber can be broken down in a few different categories but mainly we're talking about softwoods and hardwoods if we're talking about any other sort of board or um, timber i should say uh, we're probably talking about things that have been manipulated by man like manufactured boards such as MDF and plywood and things like this. But we're mainly focusing on just these two areas, softwood and hardwood. Okay. Now, you might think that softwood is soft and hardwood is hard. This is not the case, not in any uh, complete way. Uh, most hardwoods are hard and most softwoods are softer. Okay. But this is mainly down to the way they grow. Okay. So softwoods grow very quickly. Now, as a tree grows, it gets bigger from the inside out outwards okay and because softwood grows very quickly it means the grain structure is very wide now this means the softwood is often quite less dense than the hardwood hardwood grows slowly therefore you get a very dense tight grain structure that you don't see quite so much in a softwood tree now the other difference uh, to categorize these two is looking at the trees themselves i suppose now softwoods mainly are evergreen as in they grow all year round the winter and in the, the summer they've got their leaves okay now their leaves are very different though to a hardwood tree they are more likely to have small needles on them than the broad leaves that you'll see on a hardwood tree and because they're often called coniferous trees softwood trees are called coniferous we can assume that they have cones or conifers on the outsides of them so a pine tree for example or some of the things you might have around uh, if you celebrate Christmas in the house, okay, they often have those little pine cones hanging off them. That's how you might determine it as being a coniferous or a softwood tree. So that's kind of defined some of the different uh, materials there and giving you some examples of how they might be used. Um, you can test yourself on some of the questions at the end to see how much you know about the different materials.